Hello, my name is Susan Gardner, Director of Clinical Services for Illinois Council on Long-Term Care. We're here today with Michelle Sturkey, Chief Clinical Officer for New Care Corporation, to talk about the new guidance for the Centers for Medicaid and Medicaid Services on Feeding Tubes. Uh, this month, CMS did release sweeping new guidance for nursing homes on the assessment, use, and evaluation of feeding tubes. Welcome, Michelle. Thank you for coming here. Why do you feel that CMS felt that we needed new guidance for feeding tubes? Well, I think there's a couple of reasons, Susan. First of all, with the focus on 30-day readmissions, part of that focus is really looking at someone's end-of-life choices and end-of-life care and making sure that the choices that we're making for the resident are what the resident would have liked. Also, there's more and more research that feeding tubes in certain disease processes at the end of life do not prolong life and in fact can make the quality of life for that person less. So CMS felt, I believe, that these new tube feeding guidelines will help clarify some of that. Okay, so basically there were also a lot of new guidance on quality of life, quality of end of life. So it kind of folds right into, you know, this is more of the medical part of that quality of life, you know, the need for feeding tubes. Uh, we've got regulations on feeding tubes. How do these really differ from what we have right now? Well, again, I think it really focuses on finding out why the tube feeding went in, if it went in because of an emergency situation, are we now discussing what alternatives are? Are we looking to see if that's what the person would have wanted? Are we really looking aggressively to try and wean someone off the tube feeding? Are we looking to see if maybe we can give them, you know, true food or a pleasure diet or a, a thickened diet or a mechanically altered diet to make sure that their needs are being met? And it also talks um, a lot more clinically about the care of a tube feeding and a gastrostomy or gigostomy tube and what we need to do to care for those and really set up some, special, um, some best practice guidelines for the care of a G-tube. So it's basically not just the, the care of the G-tube, it's also going to be uh, very, very important family discussions that need to go in when these decisions are made about those feeding tubes. Absolutely. And when someone comes to the building, making sure that the IDT sits down with the family and talks about what the treatment goals are for that resident and what the um, long-term goals are for that resident so that we make sure that we are providing the best quality of life for that resident. Now you've talked about you know some of the things that the facilities need to do. Are there some that really need to be highlighted that they need to get ready um, for the implementation of these new regulations so that they can stay ahead of those regulations? First of all I would make sure that upon hire there is a competency that all nurses go through as um, on the care of the tube, following your policy and procedure for flushing, writing the orders, care of the gastrostomy site, how you check for residual, how you check for placement. That the CNAs also upon hire have a competency about not lying, making sure the patient's not lying flat, about what to do if the tube feeding is turned off, making sure that they let the nurse know immediately, as well as yearly competency so that our staff is truly aware of how to care for the, for the feeding. Thirdly, I would set up a um, entrance part um, care plan conference with the family when a resident comes in with the G-tube to really make sure we're documenting what the patient and or family's goals are with the tube feeding documenting um, why they felt the tube feeding was put in, making sure that we provide family education on G2 placement, especially in those end-of-life disease processes, Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, that were identified in the um, regulation and how that really doesn't help and prolong and provide for quality of life. The family education, the resident education, and those discussions about end-of-life care are going to be really important. So it, al it almost looks that, you know, after I read the regulations that it's, they used to say before in the regulations that we have to follow a standard of care. Now the regulations get pretty specific about what that standard of care is. They've really spelled it out for surveyors and for facilities. Absolutely, and I think reading, making sure that your competencies list all of the items that are in the, um, in the guideline 
as well as, again, making sure that those conversations are being held with the families or significant others on admission. And I think also getting that information from the hospital prior to admission will also be very helpful. Utilizing your relationships with those hospital nurses and talking about maybe if they know why the tube feeding was put in is going to be very helpful because sometimes um, coming to a nursing home is very stressful and that's the last right. thing that the families are going to want to be talking about on admission. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, just a reminder, this week's newsletters are going to not only contain a lot about uh, feeding tubes, but it also does contain an in-service that facilities can use uh, when they are doing some of their competencies with their uh, nurses. Um, the Illinois Council and the Illinois Healthcare will also go over these new regulations and guidance in seminars that they are going to be having throughout the state uh, in November. Michelle, thank you so much for joining us today, and everyone, thank you for joining us also. Goodbye.